Lord, I thank you for this time together. We meet together in Jesus' mighty name. We ask, Father, that you will speak to us and encourage us through the word of God to teach us something that will increase our faith and make us into better servants. Help us, Lord, to be good, faithful servants for you. Lord, bless your people, encourage them. We ask for the work of the Holy Spirit. We ask for the anointing of God to come upon your word, Father, and upon our lives. Lord, make us radical for God. Make us strong in God, that we will follow you, love you, obey you, and be your true servants. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I just want to encourage you through the word of God, and it is a bit of a Christmas message that I want to share with you and just want to encourage you through the example of Joseph and Mary. Why did God choose Joseph and Mary? And there's certain aspects in their lives which God honored and needs to be in our lives for us to be true servants of God's. So we're going to focus on this aspect of the Christmas story. And really, it's about the importance of being righteous parents. We, we live in a society where many places, families are not walking in the fullness of God's word. And it's brought about broken families. But God wants to heal the family. And the best example is when parents repent of their sins, follow God, and seek to be righteous. Or even if there's a spiritual awakening in a parent's heart so that they change their lives. And I'm thinking of situations where maybe one is a Christian, maybe, but the other is not walking with God. But then there's a breakthrough. Suddenly, the one who was not walking with God repents and suddenly there's a Christian family, Christian parents. Well, who was God going to choose for the birth of the Messiah? God, of course, was going to look for a mother and a, a father who had certain aspects in their lives. And God wasn't just going to trust anyone with the birth of, of the Son of God coming from heaven. He had to look for virtues, godly virtues that were special to him. God was not going to choose wicked parents. He was going to choose righteous parents. And this speaks to me of how Christian husbands and wives, when they have families, they have to be righteous parents. God is the creator of the family. God is the creator of marriage. And marriage has to be honored and esteemed. And there has to be repentance in this world because of both broken marriages, a, a failure of following God and the way that people maybe enter relationships or view relationships, the, the worldliness I, I'm from New Zealand, and here in New Zealand, we're influenced by different ways of the world, but we have to put that aside and follow the word of God. And we have to restore God's original plan for the family, for the marriage covenant, and also impart a vision into people's hearts of what it means to be righteous parents. And this is also an aspect of the Christmas story. But first of all, let's get a vision of God. Once again, we have to realize that God is perfect. God is righteous and God is holy. And the eyes of God look throughout the earth to find those who will respond to his calling. But to respond to the call of God, it does take people needing to have an open heart, a listening ear, 
and people needing to have a, a sort of a hunger and a thirst for righteousness so that they can meet with God. God has promised a, a blessing for the pure in heart, for they shall see God. But because we live in this fallen world, we're born in this sinful world, and if we're influenced by the world, we can be drawn onto the wrong path, and therefore sin corrupts. But God, of course, has given the solution so that we can be purified, so that when we hear the word of God, God will create inside of us a hunger for truth, a hunger to know God, and a hunger to be close to God. And God will then respond to those who are drawing near to him, or he is drawing to himself. God is in control in one sense of drawing people to himself because he wants to find those who want to know him and belong him. So God will work in your heart to create a hunger for him. He will stir you. He will give you a vision of his power, of his righteousness, of his holiness. And when you have that vision in your heart, you won't be satisfied by this world. You will see, look, there's something wrong with this world. The darkness and the sin and the pollution of, and the corruption of this world will create in you a dissatisfaction that you just can't be satisfied with this world. God will put in your heart a longing for eternity, a longing for something greater than this world, and that is the kingdom of God. Unfortunately, so many people are blinded by the world, and if they just don't see the light of God, they're just in spiritual darkness, they're in spiritual blindness, and they will miss out on responding to the call of God. But God's invitation is for everyone. God's invitation is for you, that God has a greater plan and purpose for your life. That is the call of God. Often the call of God for your life just starts as a small seed, but you have to water it. You have to let it grow by prayer and seeking God. One of the best things to be in life is a prayerful person, a person that cries out to God. And prayer mm -hmm. needs to be a constant thing in our lives a constant hunger for God that never goes away so that every day your life is a prayer. Every day you are a prayerful person and you have that persistence because it's just a normal part of your life because you have a hunger, spiritual hunger. I hope even now, even as I'm speaking to you, that I can somehow rekindle a spiritual hunger in your heart, that I am hungry to be closer to God. I want to know God more. I want to be closer to him. I want to meet with him, and I want to be spiritually alive. I want to respond to the high call of God on my life, and I want God's best plan and purpose for me, and I want to get a breakthrough in prayer I push away the clouds of spiritual darkness that are from this world, and I get an open heaven like Jesus Christ when he was praying. And people saw it in Jesus. They saw the open heaven in his life, and they said, Jesus, teach us how to pray like you. And he just got the breakthrough for walking with God. I think for many of us as Christians, we can, if we don't maintain this strength of prayer, the clouds of the world come upon us. But we got to push those clouds back and say, Lord Jesus, give me a fresh open heaven over my life. I lay hold of God's best, God's high calling for me. But I want to look at the calling of God for both Joseph and Mary. And first of all, we'll look at the life of Joseph from Matthew chapter 1. 
and from verse 18. And it talks about, of course, the birth of Jesus Christ and Joseph was pledged. Uh, Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before, <clears throat> before they came together, Mary was found to already be pregnant and Joseph was, that would have been shocking for him. He was stunned. He was very sad. He was thinking, how could Mary be unfaithful to me? But what he didn't know at that point of time, that the child that Mary was carrying was not from man, but from the Holy Spirit. Let's just remember what happens when Mary had her visitation from an angel and the angel told her that she was pregnant. Mary actually went and visited Elizabeth for three months. So she was away for three months. So Joseph was probably thinking when he got news that Mary was pregnant, that, look, she's been unfaithful. She's been living with another man for three months. But that was not the situation whatsoever. Mary was a righteous woman. And then Joseph, he had to have help from God to understand what was going on in his circumstances so that he would not bring false judgments, that he would not judge Mary falsely by looking at her outward situation. And you could see how naturally he would make a false judgment because nothing like this had ever happened before and nothing like this would ever happen again, that the Holy Spirit would come to bring forth the Son of God, an amazing miracle, the incarnation of Christ. But let's remember that Jesus Christ came from heaven. He had a supernatural birth conceived by the Holy Spirit. But the good thing that the Bible says is that Joseph was a righteous man. I want to apply that as an example to all men. All men need to be righteous. And Joseph was specifically called a righteous man. How wonderful it is when God can look at a man and say, here is a righteous man. God looked at a person like Noah and said that he's a righteous man. God looked at Job, even in, in front of the devil. God said, Job is a righteous man. Uh, Jesus looked at a person like Nathaniel and said, look, here is a true Israelite. Now, it wasn't just because he was born an Israelite, but it was because of the state of his heart. And one reason why Joseph was chosen of God was because he walked in the righteousness of God. But Joseph, he still needed help. He needed explanation of what was going on in his circumstances. And God responded by speaking to Joseph through a dream. I, I love it when God speaks to us through dreams. And it was actually the angel of God who came to Joseph in this dream and encouraged him, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. That's also an important message for men if they start to get nervous about getting married. You know, for some reason, Again, there seems to be in the culture of today a nervousness about getting married. But the angel came to both honor Mary and to honor marriage. And we need to speak to many people again in, in today's society that aren't putting God first in their lives and, and falling into sin or even thinking that it's okay to live with a partner without marriage, which is totally false. It's a deception of the world. 
but we see that the angel came to bring encouragement to get married. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. But then the angel explained what had really happened, because what is conceived in, of, in her is of the Holy Spirit. And when Joseph, when he woke up from this dream, he obeyed the message. So first of all, we see that he had to trust God, that this dream, God was speaking to him. And of course, the, the dream was so powerful, probably never seen a dream where an angel had come to him. So he believed, he recognized that this had truly come from God. God had intervened into the life of Joseph. We need to recognize when God is speaking to us. We need to recognize when God is intervening into our lives. And we actually find that God speaks to Joseph quite a few times through dreams. But every time he receives a message from God, he obeys that message. And we need to know the importance of obeying God when God speaks to us. We've got to have ears to hear. We've got to be listening for God's voice. We've got to be walking by faith. But Joseph, you know, if he had had a lack of faith, if he had had a lack of trusting God, he would have never been entrusted to be the earthly guardian of Jesus Christ. But he had that faith where he said, yes, he will obey what God is saying to him. So after Christ was born, we have the story of how King Herod wanted to kill baby Jesus and wise men came from the east because of the sign that God had given to them. And that was through a star. God can give different signs and guidance for people's lives. And obviously God has spoken to them saying that this star will lead them to the place of the birth of the Messiah. But even when they got to Jerusalem, they didn't know where the they they didn't know where Christ was being born. So they went to King Herod. They asked him, Do you know where the Messiah is? And King Herod was shocked because he was totally oblivious to the work of God. But the whole nation of Israel was supposed to have an expectation in their hearts, waiting for the coming of the Messiah. The religious leaders, they had preached it for many years in the synagogues of Israel because of the Old Testament prophets. The prophet Isaiah, about 800 years before the birth of Christ, had prophesied it and other prophets as well. And the prophets were preparing Israel for the first coming of the Messiah. But due to the backslidden state of the nation, the majority of the nation were unprepared. And unfortunately, we're living in a day like that as well, because we should be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. But imagine when, if Jesus Christ were to return today, what percentage of people would truly be ready? And so, unfortunately, Israel 2,000 years ago was hardly ready for the coming of the Messiah. And Herod, not being, uh, not being very close to God, he had to ask the religious leaders to tell him from the scriptures where the Messiah would be born. He didn't know himself. He should have known the Bible. He should have known where the Messiah was going to be born. But he had to ask and get the religious leaders to look it up in the Old Testament scriptures. And it was in the book of Micah. And it says that the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. So the wise men were sent to Bethlehem and they rejoiced again because 
the star that they had previously seen began to shine again. And again, they were guided to the exact position where they encountered the birth of Christ. Uh, King Herod told them lies. He said that when you find the Messiah, tell me so that I may also come and worship him. But that was a lie. King Herod's heart was full of evil. He was full of the devil. And in his heart, he was thinking, look, I'm the king of Israel. I don't want any coming child to be a king. And in his heart, he was so evil that he wanted to kill the Messiah. And you just think how sad it is that people can become so blind and so deceived that in their hatred of Christ, they are working against God. And of course, the world is full of people like that who, who have been led by the devil. But again, God spoke to Joseph in a dream, told him to escape, go to Egypt, and immediately Joseph obeys God. Again, he had to trust God that this dream was the right message because Egypt, that was a different land, a different culture, different language. And yet he had to take this journey, trusting God, that God had sent him to Egypt. So again, Joseph puts Mary on his donkey. Once again, they head on another journey. But this time with baby Jesus, they travel to Egypt. And it seems that they possibly spent about two years in Egypt. And I think one of the God's provision was the gifts that the wise men or magi had given to Jesus, the gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And obviously they were expensive gifts. And I, pre I presume that Joseph could have used them to finance his life in Egypt for those two years. And that's because God is the provider. When it's God's will, God will open the door and God has ways of providing so that his will is accomplished. So that, that was a blessing that God of God's provision. And there are times in our lives when God will provide for us because he has something special for us to do. He has a special mission for us. And then when it was time for Joseph to return home and go back to Israel again, God spoke to him through a dream. But in all of this, we see that Joseph was a righteous man. He constantly obeyed the voice of God, and that's why he was entrusted to be the earthly guardian of Jesus Christ. Now, I quickly want to look, mention a few things about Mary and just look at why she was chosen of God. And the godly virtues that we see in Joseph and Mary, they need to be outworked in our hearts just so that we can walk in that reality of being chosen by God. Of course, our calling, each of us, we have a different calling, but we have a call of God upon our lives. And I just want to encourage you to grow and be strong in the call of God that is upon your life. So an angel also came to Mary and the angel said, you have found favor with God. You have found favor with God. But actually all of us should be walking in God's favor. And I want to encourage you to be a person who finds favor with God, that when God looks at you, he sees something special in your heart. And that should be a love for God, a love for Jesus. Let's be the people who most love God. Let's declare it. I love Jesus. I'm following Jesus all my life. No turning back. I have the favor of God. But how does a person find this favor? Now, it's not what the outward appearance looks like, 
but it's what's in a person's heart. What is in your heart? Now, I want to illustrate this quickly from the story of Samuel when he was called to anoint the next king because he saw many fine, good-looking young men, strong. And he, he thought to himself, surely God has chosen one of these men. But man and Samuel fell into this mistake. He was looking at the outward appearance. But God challenged him by saying that God, he looks at the heart. God looks at the truth. And so all these fine men were not chosen by God. They looked great outwardly, but something was missing in their hearts, that love for God. So Samuel had to ask Jesse, the father, don't you have any more sons? And then Jesse remembered his youngest son who was out in the field looking after the sheep, and that was David, the one who was chosen to become the king because of his heart for God and his love for God. And that's why he was chosen to be anointed. He had a heart for God. So when, Mary, when the angel comes to Mary and says, you have found favor with God, that's because Mary already had a heart that was pleasing to God. That's the type of heart that we should have. So often I just want to re even remind myself that, Lord God, I just want to humble myself before you once again. Lord, help me to be a humble person because God resists the proud, but gives his favor to the humble. So if you want to have God's favor, and I, of course we do, we want God's blessing, we have to have that humility. And we just have to say, God, I want to walk humbly with you. Lord, just remove any pride from me. Lord, help me to be humble because I want that grace. I want that favor. I want that blessing from God. And it's out of that position of having God's favor that the angel then told Mary that she was pregnant. And of course, this was an immediate shock and surprise. How? How can I be pregnant, Mary was thinking. But the angel reassured her that the Holy Spirit has come upon you and that this child is the son of God. Well, that's a, a, a powerful and would have been a very surprising, totally shocked Mary. Imagine encountering an angel and being told these words. But Mary's response was very beautiful. And she says, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. What a beautiful heart Mary had. And we see that Mary, she had great faith. She believed the words of the angel. Even though it sounded impossible, she believed the word of God. Now, Let's just remember again that six months earlier, before Mary got pregnant, Elizabeth had also had the blessing of getting pregnant. Mary was a young girl, but Mary, Elizabeth, was an old woman. And here we had a miracle, a bit like with Abraham and Sarah, where Sarah had was able to, by the grace of God to have a child in her old age. Well, so was Elizabeth. Everyone knew that Elizabeth was past the age of bearing a child. And yet God also did this miracle for her, a mighty miracle. But how it came about was when an angel, Gabriel, came to the husband, Zechariah. He was a priest, a high priest. He had the job was chosen for the special privilege once a year to go into the great temple, right into the Holy of Holies. And when Zechariah went into that place, an angel of God appeared to him. And the angel told him, your wife, Elizabeth, is pregnant. And Zechariah's response to the angel was, well, what sign 
so that I can believe you? What sign are you going to give me so that I can believe you? And it seems like this was this was an, a doubt in his heart, a doubt in his mind. Maybe that he was shocked that his wife was pregnant, but wasn't seeing an angel, wasn't that a sign? Seeing an angel in the Holy of Holies? <clears throat> Wasn't that enough for Zechariah to believe? He should have believed. But the angel said, rebuked him, because you have not believed, basically a judgment of God was going to come upon him, and you will not be able to speak. You will be mute until the child is born. And the, his mouth was struck so that he could not speak. And that was because Zechariah did not have faith in believing the message of the angel. Zechariah doubted, but Mary believed. And Mary was a mighty woman of faith. So I've been talking about Joseph and Mary and their example of being righteous in the eyes of God, and that God is looking for righteous parents. God is looking for righteous parents. It's such an honor to bring forth a child into this world. And we need to esteem children as being gifts of God. And we need to see the importance of being godly parents, having the wisdom of God to train children in the ways of God. And we're thinking about who God was going to entrust for the birth of the Messiah. He was not going to entrust Jesus to ungodly parents. He had to choose, make a special choice. And that's why Joseph and Mary, they qualified because of their heart, beautiful heart for God, willing to be God's servants, willing to do what God had called them to do to do. So yes, Jesus, the Messiah, the King of heaven, had to be born as a baby. He had to be fed by his mother. Mary had to make sure that he was fed properly. And Joseph had to bring, both Joseph and Mary had to bring up Jesus from being a small child into being a man, a young man, and then to a man. And this was a very, very important job. And that's why I'm talking about the importance of being righteous parents. We don't know when Joseph died, but it seems that sometime after Jesus Christ being 12 years old and before Jesus turned 30, that G Joseph is no longer mentioned. So we presume that he died sometime between those years. And it appears that when Mary, Mary was a widow by the time Jesus had begun his ministry. And we know that Jesus began his ministry at that age of 30, and he faced many attacks from the devil. Jesus was in the wilderness for those 40 days. He overcame the devil through the word of God. And that's because Jesus Christ learned the word of God right from when he was a small child. His parents taught him the word of God because he was brought up in a family that honored God and loved God. And really, that's, that's the importance for er That's what's important for every family today, that the family should honor the word of God and teach their children the word of God. Because the word of God is the sword of the spirit by which we overcome the devil and conquer the devil. And the word of God was so much in the hearts of Joseph and Mary. They honored and esteemed the word of God. And they were the family for Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who is the fullness of the word of God, but he also needed the, the blessing of this godly family, the love of God being in his family. And that's why God chose Joseph and Mary. 
So that's my encouragement for us today out of there's so many messages that we can get out of the Christmas story. But today's message is about the importance of being righteous parents. So we've looked at the example of Joseph. We've looked at the example of Mary. They were chosen by God because of what was in their hearts, the love of God. And what we need today throughout the world is a restoration of the family. And for the restoration of the family, there has to be a restoration of marriage. There has to be the righteousness of God restored to the hearts of parents. And wherever this has failed, there needs to be repentance. Repentance comes out of seeing the glory of God, God's holiness, his righteousness, and then realizing that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But the glory of God needs to be restored to the family. The glory of God needs to be restored to marriages. And wherever people have fallen short of God's glory, there needs to be repentance and a crying out to God, forgive us, save us, cleanse us. Lord, wherever I have failed, whether it be to be a good husband, a good wife, a good child, Lord, forgive us of our sins. So even again, thinking of this special month as we are heading towards the Christmas and celebrating and thinking about the birth of Jesus Christ, let us come before God humbly. Let us come before God with repentant hearts saying, Lord, teach us how to follow you. Teach us how to walk in your righteousness. Teach us how to follow the good examples Help us to follow what we learn from the work of God and the life of Joseph and Mary, that they were following God with all their hearts, obedient to God, submissive, that beautiful submissive attitude of Mary saying, I am the Lord's servant. Lord, I want to be your true servant. I want to follow you and I want to obey you, Lord God. Lord, raise up once again. Righteous parents for the glory of God. In, in Jesus' name, that is my message for you today. God bless you. And I hand over to Pastor Brian. Amen. Uh, Pastor uh, Matthew, great message. Very great message as we're in the holidays. We, uh, our hearts are prepared. Uh, our ministries are prepared. And as Uganda... We are blessed to get this portion of this message. We thank you for the revelation in Jesus' name. Ladies and gentlemen, I recognize your presence, Pastor Wanjala from Kenya. I, 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 I really appreciate you for coming. Uh, thank you, Carol. Yes, yes, thank you. My mom also attended. Mom Julie, thank you for coming too, and everybody who has come. I know this message has blessed you. We have recorded, you're going to hear the recordings, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we are much blessed, and uh, we thank God we're going to enter in, the, in this Christmas as a holy families, as a, as a holy marriages and, and couples, because it's a well-timed message for us as, as Christians and ministries. We thank you, man of God, for that great message, great revelation. We want to ask you to pray for Uganda and pray for our churches and our families to continue in this grace of this message that we have received today. Please pray for us and Uganda. Yes, let's pray. Lord, I stretch my hand of just to impart again the blessing of God to the servants of God in Uganda, also Kenya. Lord, just bring mighty revival, restoration of families, restoration of marriages, restoration, Lord God, of wherever things have been broken down. Let there be repentance, turning to God. Lord, let us honor the covenant of marriage. Lord, give us wisdom 
how to speak the truth of God into people's lives, to change people's lives. Lord, to bring people out of spiritual darkness, bring people into the light of Christ. Lord, anoint us with your Holy Spirit. Give us your wisdom. Lord, I pray for an impartation of the wisdom of God for every servant of God listening to this message, that they will be able to speak the truth in the love of God, but to set people free from the lies and the traps of the devil. Lord, we thank you that we are called by your name to belong to you. And Lord, we give you praise. We give you thanks, Lord Jesus. Thank you for such a great salvation we have. We thank you that Christmas is a beautiful time of the year. It's like a sign. Lord, it's an opportunity to, for people to realize God's love for them. We pray for the, the, every church in Uganda and Kenya that, Lord, honors your name and is glorifying you. Lord, that there will be revival in the churches that people will come to you with all their hearts and submit to you and bow before you and worship the great King, our Lord and Savior. Lord, grant a greater ingathering of people coming to salvation. Lord, let every Christian be the true Christian. Let every Christian be the strong Christian. Lord, let us not drift away or fall into the darkness of this world. We overcome the world by faith in the Son of God. We proclaim, Lord Jesus, that you are holy. Lord, I'm just thinking of how you are actually called the holy child. Lord, you are holy. We proclaim the holiness of God. Thank you that the angels of heaven are crying out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And thank you, Lord Jesus, that you came from heaven to this earth to demonstrate the holiness of God in and through your life so that we could behold your glory and we could see what it is like to truly know you and be a friend of God and to see that holiness and our lives to be changed and transformed. So again, we pray that this Christmas, let people have a vision of the glory of Jesus Christ. Let them see your majesty and power. Let our hearts be overwhelmed by the glory of Jesus. Let our hearts be set on fire for God, fire for Jesus inside of us. So bless these servants of God. Bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be watching us wherever you are. You may be here in Uganda or uh, worldwide, and you haven't given your life to Jesus. A man of God is still here. And this message is for us to receive Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. We cannot miss this touch. We cannot miss this journey. Maybe you're backslided. You've been in salvation, but backslided. Now this is a time, brother and sister, so that you receive a salvation and move in a great journey in this um, holiness and this Christmas. Let uh, the gift Christ Jesus not pass you by, wherever you are, or you may receive this message after we have finished, but still you can surrender your heart to Christ Jesus. Man of God, lead everyone who's watching us into salvation as we are concluding. Yes, I have mentioned the need for repentance. Repentance is turning away from your sins and rejecting your sin, rejecting anything that's holding you back from God. So if there's something that's holding you back, what is it? Let it go. Repent of your sin. Put Jesus Christ first in your life. So now is the time to do that. Now is the time to come and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me of my sins. Lord, I'm going to give my life to you. And if that's you, I would like you to lead you in a prayer to call upon the name of the Lord to forgive you of your sins. And this is when we again have to look to the cross where Jesus died on the cross for your sins to demonstrate God's love for you. So let God's love melt your heart 
and receive God's love. Don't hold back. Don't reject. Don't ignore the love of God, but say, Lord, right now, I'm opening my heart to you. Forgive me. Save me. Jesus, come into my heart. So you can just say that right now. So please say this prayer after me right now. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Save me. I don't want to go to hell. Teach me to be on the path to heaven. I acknowledge that the only way to heaven is through you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, come into my heart. So as you're just saying that with faith, what you're doing is opening your heart to Jesus. Jesus is standing here right now, knocking on the door of your heart. But you've got to open your heart and say, yes, Lord, come in. So just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me. Save me. I will follow you for the rest of my life. And it's just making that commitment, a fresh commitment, where you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. That means he's my master. He's my savior. He's my king. I'm going to follow him for the rest of my life. It's coming to that point of decision. I'm making a decision to be a true Christian. And that's why I'm calling you forth right now. Make that decision. Yes, Jesus, I'm deciding to follow you. Really, all it is is saying yes to Jesus. Have you done it? Have you said yes to Jesus? I trust that you have. And therefore, Christ has entered your heart. And then the promise of God is that he does forgive you. He forgives you. So I'm also going to pray for that as well. Just a fresh realization of God's love filling your heart. Let's just receive God's love right now. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, whoever is opening their heart to you, pour out their, your love upon them. Whoever has said yes to Jesus, let them be overwhelmed by the love of God, the mercy of God that he forgives you, that he's willing to give you a place in heaven, that the holy God, you know, one sin would have, is enough to take us to hell fire. But because of God's love, he forgives you, saves you, and gives you a place in heaven. So great is the salvation that God offers you. And Lord, just make this real in people's hearts right now impart into them the love of God, but also the, the fire of the Holy Spirit, the call of God upon their lives, God's plan and purpose for you. We speak God's destiny. We speak God's high calling upon your life. You are blessed in Jesus' name. The works of the devil be broken off your life in Jesus' name. Every curse broken through the blood of Jesus. And it's through the blood of Jesus you are made holy. You are set apart for God and you are given a new life in Christ. So through faith in Jesus, you receive that. And we also just speak the uh, blessing of an impartation of the Holy Spirit to make that real and powerful in your life that the high call of God is upon you. God bless. Amen. Congratulations to those who have got saved if you're around Uganda and you don't have uh, anyone to, lead, to help you in your journey of your salvation. We are here. We can help you. If you're in Kenya, Pastor Wanjala can help you in your journey of salvation. Wherever you are, look for spirit filled servant of God, a pastor, who will help you in your journey that you began today. Amen. Pastor, thank you uh, for the great message. We are happy and blessed. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Awesome to always share the word of God with you. God bless your ministries. Do great things for God. And wonderful to meet a pastor from Kenya. God bless Kenya. Let there be mighty revival. God bless.